Well, hello everybody. I've been promising for a long time that I would do a better supernetting or subnetting video, so here we go. Now to get us started, I want to cover two really basic um, ideas or, or sort of give you a reminder about how these things work. And the first one is a logical end. So I'm going to draw a truth table here and we'll go through the values. So there's our AND, and what AND does is tests two inputs and gives you a resultant output. So I'm going to take a 0 and a 1, and a 0 and a 1. So this is just an AND truth table. When I AND a 0 and a 0, I get a 0. When I AND a 0 and a 1, I get a 0. When I AND a 1 and a 0, I get a 0. The only time that I get a 1 out of it is when I AND a 1 and a 1. So the important thing to remember is that anything ANDed with a 0 gives you a 0. So that's really important. And of course the reason that we look at ANDs is because we want to look at subnetting and that's the interplay between an address and the mask. So let's take a look at a small network. So 192.168.15.0 is a small network and we know that because this is a class C That's usually the mask that we have associated with this. This also means that when we look at this mask, all of the hosts that are on this particular network actually range from 15.0 to 15.255. We also know that there's commonly a gateway. So the gateway might be 192.168.15.1 or 192.168. 15.254, depending on your preference. So that's one of the addresses that comes out of our address space. Now, other things that we know about this. The address 192.168.15.0 is actually our network ID, and 192.168.15.255 is actually the network broadcast. So a couple of special addresses that come out of this space. Well, what's not as obvious is that because we use this mask, any of the hosts that reside in this range of 0 to 255 wind up on this particular network. How does that happen? through the magic of AND. So I'm going to erase this for a sec. And I'm going to take just, well, maybe just for space, I'll take these two guys right here. So 15.0 looks like this. Whoops. So that's 15, and then 0. And this is 255. Not zero. Okay. So when I and these two together, we now know from our anding that anything ended with a zero gives me a zero. And these guys, a one ended with a one, that gives me ones. But look here, we've got all zeros. So you go, oh, that, that's too easy. That's too easy. So what if I picked an address? A different address. If I said 192, 168, 15 dot, oh, I don't know, how about uh, 35? 35. 35. So that means that we change this binary to 35. Well, let's see how that works. Let's see if we can do some binary here. That's 128, 64, 32, 16, 8. Well, we need three more. So let's do that. Okay, so that looks like 35. Now when I and these guys, what happens? Well, 0, 0, oh, that's a 0 still. 
zero, 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 it goes on zero. So what that means is that no matter what address I pick in this range, it always winds up on the 15.0 network. So that's important to, to remember. And so that's how the, the network's address that you have, the IP address that you have, and the subnet mask or the net mask interact. So the whole point of the net mask is to tell me what network I'm on. Okay. Well, let's do, or we'll leave those up there for a second. Let's do an example. Let's say that I want to break this network up into, oh, we'll make it tougher. We'll do eight subnets, okay? So let's say that you, you, we've got eight departments or eight groups and we want to make eight subnets. So that's our problem. We want eight subnets. Well, one way to do this in a fairly straightforward fashion, it's a little cheating, but it's a shortcut and it works most of the time, is that if I look at the range of possible addresses that we have here, it's from 0 to 255, or 256 possible addresses. So what I could do is simply say, all right, 256 divided by 8 gives me 32 nodes. So what this means is that I'm going to create eight subnets, but in those eight subnets there are 32 hosts in each one. Now, what are my subnets? Well, one of the things that we have to remember is that when we start counting with networking, we always count and start counting at zero. So that means my first subnet is going to be 192, 168, 15, and because we're subnetting, we're going into the host portion, so we're going to start there at zero. Well, I have 32. We start counting at zero. A range of 32 possible gives me zero to 31. Whoa. All right, 31. Well, that means that the next subnet just picks up where that one left off. 192, 168, 15 dot you guessed it, 32. Well, I add 31 to that, I get 63. So each one of these has a possible range of 32 addresses with each um, subnet starting where the, the next one or the previous one left off. So I can keep going. Keep doing that. 15. Dot. So 64 would be the next one. 64 and 31 is 95. 96 and 31 puts me out to 127. Now just pause here for a sec. We're exactly halfway through our address space at this point. My next one is 128. I add 31 to this and I get 159. One sixty to one ninety one. Now the if I add thirty one to this guy I get I'm closing in on the end of my range here. And then that finishes out. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's my eight subnets. And I'd like to point out a couple of things to you here. Right there was the beginning of my class full address space. And right there is the end. So all of the addresses are, are um, accounted for. Now, this column right here is the network ID, but now because we're talking about subnets, this actually becomes the subnet ID. This column becomes the broadcast ID. So each one of the subnets has an ID, a network ID, or a subnet ID, and the broadcast address. So if we go back over here, 
we know that this was 256 possible addresses for what we call the class full address space and that was 0 to 255. But because this one's the the network ID and this one is the broadcast ID, what this really means is that we have 254 whoops usable. Each one of our subnets that we created has 32 possible but 30 usable. Now we wouldn't be complete without saying that we had a router up here, maybe 15.1 or 15.254. We need routers over in these guys too. So a router can either be low or high in the range. So if we take this first, well, we'll take the second one. As an example, what do you suppose the routers might be in this, this second subnet? Well, I might use 192, 168, 30, or 15.32 is the network, so the, the gateway might be 33 or might be 62 for the low and high in the range for the routers. All right, well, that works out pretty well, uh, and there's my subnetting. I broke them up into eight subnets. I just did simple division here and then used a little trick to say what the ranges of the addresses might be. But we haven't really answered the question yet. What is the new mask? If I use, try to use this same mask, all of these will be part of one network. And the answer lies in our binary. We have eight possible subnets here. And so we have to ask ourselves, what is the modification to the mask that we, we're gonna use? So what happens is when we, when we subnet, we take a look at the subnet mask and because we're, we're breaking up this class full address space into smaller chunks, we actually steal bits into the host portion. So what that means is we have to steal the right number of bits. We created eight subnets here, so we need to steal enough bits to give me eight possibilities or eight subnets. Well, how many possibilities are in each bit? Each bit represents two possibilities. If I steal uh, two bits, how many possibilities do I have? Well, I have four. If I steal three bits, I have eight. Well, Maybe that was a little magic for you, but so let's see how that works out. If I have one bit, right, one bit, I can put either a zero or a one in that space, so I have two possibilities. If I have two bits, I can put a zero, zero there, a zero, one, a one, zero, or a one, one. So, that is my four possibilities that I have in two bits. If I steal three bits, I can put a zero, zero, zero there, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. I could do, um, let's move over here, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, or one, one, one. Those are my eight possibilities. So, uh, that's the number of bits that I need to steal in order to create my eight subnets. Well, how does that work? Now it's time to break this out into binary. Let's see how it works. If you were, if you, if you knew a lot about subnetting, you might just say, oh, I'm going to steal three bits, so that means my mask changes to 224. And that's true, but let's see how that actually works. Okay. Well, I'm going to put this whole thing in binary here. It's going to be a little tough to see. Maybe, maybe I'll just, uh, I'll just work with these two guys again. So here are my. Here's this octet. And then here's this guy right here. Remember that these two are going to be the same, and then we have all zeros here. 
So we just learned that we have to steal three bits. Well, how do we do that? If you remember from our earlier videos, in subnetting, the ones represent, the binary ones represent the network portion and the binary zeros represent the host portion. So what I'm going to do is steal into the host portion and I'm going to steal three bits. So I'm going to go this way into my host portion. And what I'm going to do is change my mask and maybe use a different color here. I'm going to steal these three bits. Okay. That makes this portion okay, my subnet field. So that's the part that I'm now paying a lot of attention to. So if I simply convert this back to base 10, I get 255, 255, 255, and then what's this number? Well, that's 128 plus 64 plus 32, so my new mask would be 255, 255, 255, 224. And so all of the subnets and all of the hosts in this subnetted address space would all now use a 224 address space. Well, let's take a, a, another example here. We were using uh, 35 for um, this original address. And we saw originally that 192.168.15.35 was on the 192.168.15.0 network. Well, what network is it on now? So let's let's put this address back in back in our subnetting here, and his address looks something like this. So now when we do the ending process, let me clean up some of this. We bring these down and we get 0, 0, 1. Aha, there's one of change. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So where before this host was on the 192.168.15.0 network, what network is he on now? Well. If I bring 192 down, it's, that's the same. I got all ones right here, so this is the same. I got all ones here still, so this is the same. But now, my new network is 32. Well, that makes sense because the first subnet was the range of 0 to 31. The second subnet was the range of 32 to 63. And certainly, 35 falls in that range, so the, the new subnet that this host would now be on would be the 192.168.15.32 network. Well, there we have it. So I'm going to pause right there, and when we come back, I'll show you another way to do subnet calculations. All right?